Hey folks, hope you're doing well, staying healthy mentally and physically, and are having a great start to what is going to be a holiday week for us here in the United States. It's Thanksgiving on Thursday, and I'm just going to make this quick video. There was a reply to a recent video I posted uh, from a subscriber, Julie D. Quite a lengthy message. I really appreciate that, but it's a little bit too much for me to answer via text, so I wanted to address some of the key points of that comment here and start off by saying in the last video that I released, at some point in there I mentioned that likes, shares, subscribes don't matter to me, but that just kind of, uh, that was the wrong word or term. What I want to say is they don't necessarily influence why I'm doing this or when I go about creating content and the thought processes that are going through my mind. Obviously, I appreciate all the comments. You can see I reply to those and, and do take that to heart. So thank you. I didn't mean to minimize any of your time or effort that has been placed and dedicated to the content that I published. So sorry for that confusion. I just, I thought about that almost as soon as I said something and then had published the video and, and whatnot. So to address Julie D, uh, yes, I do know who Dutch Sense is. He actually lives fairly close to me. I'm in kind of like West St. Louis County, and I believe he's a little outside of that. So not too far. Honestly, I'd love to meet up with him and chat at some point. Uh, I think I told him that I'd <laughs> buy him a beer or coffee and just it'd be interesting to talk with him because he he takes a very methodical scientific approach to his research. I know many people find it controversial or questionable, whatever, but look, he makes his methods known, he walks through it, and he ultimately enables the viewers to use those tools to inform themselves. So with that said, he has uncovered patterns that maybe some other people are also acknowledging the USGS and some of the mainstream organizations have clearly kind of targeted him and attempted to discredit him. But again, you can look at data, you can look at patterns. I will stress correlation is not causation. But in many instances, correlation is something that should not be ignored. So doing our due diligence to uh, go through that process and validate things is extremely important. And we need to hold each other accountable. As to the reasons for why the USGS is not giving accurate information on earthquakes and seismic activity around the world... I did cover that in the video I just published. This is uh, November 23rd. I pub published it this morning. And ultimately, the reason why I believe this happens is they need to have resources within the organization dedicated to looking at external organization data. I don't know what the, the funding is like for the USGS or what their staff is like or how they prioritize certain events around the world, but I can only speculate that they just don't have the time, money, energy to have as quick of a reaction to analyze and review data that happens outside of the US as they do within CONUS or the continental United States. There is definitely, there are seismographs all over the world. And one of the things that Dutch points out is the fact that Russia and earthquake, uh, sorry, Russia and China will go very long periods of time without any sort of reporting on the USGS site. And again, I don't think that there's necessarily a, a causation in the correlation there. There could be, but I don't have the evidence to support that. And at this point, we just kind of have to go off of what the USGS states within their uh, 
their site here. I mean, they say they may not rapidly locate earthquakes smaller than five outside the U.S. unless they've caused significant damage or are widely felt. Okay, so they're saying they're unreliable or they're not going to rapidly locate, review, and publicize that. Take that for what it is. There was a statement about the drilling and the operations that end up uh, impacting areas like what Dutch has pointed out over in California with all of the drilling. Does the U.S. realize that there are repercussions for this activity? Um, maybe. Maybe they don't. It's extremely difficult to say on that point as well because, look, if anything has been proven to us historically, it's that these authorities can make decisions, they can run programs without necessarily understanding the long-term effects, and those repercussions are not felt until after the fact. So to think that scientists are 100% correct all the time in their assumptions and that their research and analysis is leading them to go down a path which is risk-free and won't have side effects is just completely absurd. Like, look at all of the medications that the pharmaceutical companies have created or any of the many products that go through research, development, and testing in any industry that end up being recalled because of problems that they didn't see at the time. I'm sure you can extrapolate that logic to the ongoing situation with pharmaceutical and the vaccines. That's a whole separate topic. But look, science is not fixed. Science is always subject to scrutiny. We should always be questioning authority. And any authority that hides behind whatever uh, veil they choose to put up and not answering questions is an authority that deserves even more scrutiny, in my opinion. The last point that I wanted to cover, uh, Julie mentioned that she worries about the USGS not accurately reporting information at Yellowstone. Maybe there's some sort of cover-up. Mary Greeley has put out a number of videos where she will show you this map and all of the activity that occurs within this map. And then she'll pull down the seismographic data and show you the exact points that are being reported here. For example, she'll pick an earthquake and say, yeah, you know, we saw this 2.7 this timestamp. But we also saw five other earthquakes between these two. Now, at face value, that looks like data that is missing, be it intentional or not, because it's in the raw data on the back end, but it's not being presented to the public here. So first of all, think about the percentage of people who actually come and look at this site and look at this map, probably extremely low. And then think about what percentage of those people are taking the next step to go download the data from those individual stations and then load them into their tool and analyze the graph. It's astronomically low. But I will say she has pointed out on a number of a number of instances where there is data on the back end, which does not appear on the front end. I don't have an explanation for that. Could just be they don't have the time or resources to to post all of that. I, I really don't know. Uh, but look, let's be realistic here. If there were some sort of major disaster that's impending and the government knows about it, they're not going to tell you. Don't be naive. If you think that the government has your best interests in mind, you are living in a dreamland. And I don't say that to, to be conspiratorial or anything. I say that because I have worked as a government and military contractor and there's just, they operate for themselves and they operate for the safety of the warfighter for the most part. 
I'm not going to get into all of the various aspects of what some call the military industrial complex and that whole rabbit hole. But look, the government does not have your best interest at heart for the most part. They are serving themselves. There's an agenda and there's absolutely no way, in my opinion, that they're going to come out and say, oh yeah, we're about to have this massive eruption at Yellowstone that's going to wipe out half of the country. Do you really think they would do that? Or do you think they would just let it happen? Because if they let it happen, the result is going to essentially be the same as if they gave everyone a warning. Just use basic logic and common sense here. They're not going to cause widespread panic by telling people we're seeing this uptick. It could indicate an eruption. And there's a whole lot of controversy just surrounding the intervals of the eruption at, at Yellowstone anyway. There's people that say it's overdue. There's people that say it could happen in another million years. From what I've seen, they, at a very high level, say that there's an eruption. There were three eruptions over 2.1 million years, which means the average time between eruption is 700,000 years. I hope to God that is not the calculation and method that they're going into predicting this because a toddler could do that. Anyone who can do basic division and split things up into equal parts would reach that conclusion. So take it for what it is. Correlation is not causation. Again, do your own research, inform yourselves, question authority. Science deserves scrutiny. Anyone who claims to be an authority deserves scrutiny. And that includes me. So if you have anything to say, anything to bring up, I'm more than happy to address that via comment. If it's something I feel deserves a video, I will produce a video. And yeah, thank you for your time. Have a great day. Peace.